You are listening to the voice of the frontline protector here at the Private Officer Beat Radio. Every week, you'll hear breaking news, topics of training, information for the industry of security, public safety, and law enforcement. So strap in, hang on, we're about to speed off in this episode of the Private Officer B Radio. Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome to this edition of the Private Officer B Radio Show, a production of Private Officer International and Blue Ram Media Group. I'm your host, Rick McCann, founder and CEO of Private Officer. Uh, You know, we were going to start the show off with a little bit of weather info, but my, (laughs) my associates told me, Lay off that stuff for a while. We're talking almost every week about the weather and whether or not it's going to cause an issue for the security people out there, the public safety folks who have to work in all in climate type weather, hot, cold, icy, rainy, it doesn't matter. But you know what? I'm out there too. So... I travel extensively, so I'm always running into that weather situation in one way or the other. But very briefly, I will tell you that we had uh, quite a bit of inclimate weather moving for the last three weeks from the west to the east. A lot of snow, blizzards, ice conditions. Uh, North Carolina is in the high country. Uh, Often they get hit with quite a bit of snow, and then down toward the uh, middle area of the state, the Charlotte metropolitan area, we get rain, ice, and an occasional snow, and the ice is just as bad, especially when it's black ice. Thankfully, not really uh, affecting us in our particular area at this time, but I am heading out for about nine or ten days of training throughout a number of states, and so I'm sure that I will be seeing that. I also have to head north coming up here shortly, and who knows? There's no telling what type of weather I'm going to run into. But if you're working in the weather, especially these days in the snow and the cold and the ice, send your photos to helpdesk at privateofficer.com. Helpdesk at privateofficer.com. Just like a half a dozen of your fellow security officers have in the past week. And every month we're going to give away some merch, some free merchandise for the best pictures. We've got some from Washington State, where they were out in the snow, literally patrolling in literally about 8 to 12 inches of snow. We've got some from a very cold Minnesota area along the lake. Uh, we have uh, pictures of folks in Florida in short sleeves and sunglasses. So send them in, helpdesk at privateofficer.com. And I'll tell you, you'll probably win some merchandise, some free merch, hats, T-shirts, briefcase, all sorts of patches, and uh, and a sundry. Ah, now there's a word you just don't hear that often anymore. And a sundry of other items. We have really a lot of exciting things to talk about. Of course, we have breaking news. Um, We're going to be announcing some upcoming conferences and training. And, uh, of course, we've got a lot of breaking news, good and bad. 
I was reminded just before coming on here, I have to kind of not take so many breaks and I got to speed through this because a very delicious meal, homemade lasagna, is waiting in the wings. And, you know, even though it's it's not really lunchtime, we're in between breakfast and lunch at this point, but good Italians all know that we love cold pizza, pasta, lasagna. Hey, it doesn't matter if it's 2 in the morning, 8 in the morning, 6 at night. We'll eat that any time, day or night. Those of us who grew up in the, the north area know what it's all about when you get up hungry at 2 in the morning and you got that four or five slices of pizza left over. Well, guess what? They're not going to be left over for very long because, well, we're going to take them and have a little snack. But uh, So we're going to move along here on this program this week. But guess what? We're at, we crossed over 602 radio shows today. Not too many people can say, I've had 602 radio shows. I've had two, 602 TV shows. I've had 602 books published, but good golly, Molly, we have now recorded 602 radio shows. Radio shows, especially the type that we do, are very beneficial to those in public safety and private security, loss prevention, ORC, and even law enforcement. And I'll tell you why. Because many of our radio shows often include training tips, training topics, legal topics, and and a sundry of other subjects that are very useful and they don't expire a lot. I, I recently went back and listened to some of my radio shows from 10 and 15 years ago, and a lot of those topics are as fresh and as important and viable today as they were when we first did the radio show. So the lucky thing for you, although we broadcast live, all of our shows are Available for live streaming. You can go to iHeartRadio. You can go to Amazon Radio. You can go to any place where you get your podcast, your music, or listen to your streaming uh, products. We're going to be there. Apple, iTunes, uh, Rhapsody, and many other formats. And, of course, you can also go to our website at privateofficer.org. And you can listen to the radio show right there, live or streaming. Our library still has the very original episode that we broadcasted many, many years ago. And as I was listening to some of the old, old, old episodes, I kind of thought I have kind of progressed a little bit. I'm a little bit better today than I was 15 or 18 years ago. So to your advantage, you're going to be able to pick up a lot of training information, a lot of legal information, a lot of business information completely free just by listening to all of those radio shows that we have done over the years, 602. Wow. And guess what? We're trying for another 602 more radio shows. We're not going any place. Oh, sure, I get busy, and sometimes I think, well, I just don't have the time today to broadcast, but we're actually getting busier because now we're broadcasting different types of shows. I've got a brand new radio show called Frontline Protectors, where we talk about not only private security, but frontline employees, emergency responders, fire service, EMS, uh, law enforcement, private security, public safety. And I've got a local radio show down in Alabama, good old Alabama. We talk about the local news. We got music and a whole lot more. Blue Ram Media, our website, our 
uh, platform. We'll be launching here in the next few weeks. You'll be able to listen to all those radio shows and check out some of our latest TV programming coming out right there on the Blue Ram Media uh, platform. We're going to take a quick break. When I come back, I am uh, really, I don't know if I'm disgusted, upset. Uh, I'm definitely very worried, probably more than many others. But I want to talk about 20 security guards being arrested in 35 days for fatal incidents, murder, and manslaughter. Murder and manslaughter. 20 people, 20 security officers. Is it a lack of training? Is it just being gung-ho? Is it not having the right supervision? Are we hiring the wrong people? Of the 20 arrested, at least five had felony, current felony records, and they were working for a contract security agency. So how? How does that happen? This past weekend, uh, Friday, uh, early Saturday morning, another security officer in Chicago arrested, also had gone through the proper training required in Illinois. But he was a felon as well. He had been involved in a number of felony situations. How does this happen? We're going to look at it when we come back from the first break. Remember, Body Armor USA, we definitely have what it takes to protect you. We have got the top of the line, protection, body armor, protective clothing, stab-resistant vest, gloves, slash-resistant gloves, and a whole lot more. Body Armor USA, we've got what it takes to protect you. Check them out today. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Monday edition of the Private Officer Beat Radio, February 7, 2022. receiving breaking news and our bi-weekly newsletter officer down reports and discount training news in your personal or business email then go to our website right now at privateofficer.org privateofficer.org a drop box will come down just fill out your info and you'll be the first, one of the first, for sure, to know about what's happening in the security industry. You'll know when a security officer is killed. You'll also get these great discounts on training and equipment and so much more. 
privateofficer.org. And if you're not already a member of the Private Officer International Association, sign up while you're there today. Become a lifetime member for just $99 and we'll also include a free Private Officer International patch and lapel pin. Hey everyone, you're listening to the voice of the Frontline Protector right here on the Private Officer Radio Network. Now don't go away because we are coming right back when we've got a whole lot more right here on the Private Officer Beat Radio. Life is precious. Ask any of these people. They've been given a second chance at life through organ and tissue donation. But there are more than 84,000 Americans waiting for life-saving transplants. 17 people die every day waiting. I didn't know this until I lost my best friend, Lyric. She gave the gift of life to five people. That's why I've become an organ donor, too. One decision saves so many lives. Donate life. Well, honey, it's Mardi Gras time again. Oh, yeah. You don't want to miss out on the music, the fun, the food, those parades. Oh, my gosh. If you love parades, come on down to the Gulf Coast where they know how to throw a good party, have some great food and fun, and mm, mm, mm. check out those parades. I love it myself. I'll be down there later this month. Mobile, Alabama, the original spot for Mardi Gras. And then it outgrew the city, and they had to move across the bay to uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, Cajun country. But I love that area, too. So come on down, and, hey, we're going to be playing some Mardi Gras music throughout the rest of the program. Hope you love this kind of music. I sure do. We said before we went to break, there's a lot of stuff to talk about. We need to talk about some committees. We need to be talking about some upcoming conferences and training and some other needs that we have. But unfortunately, before we head into that direction, we have to talk about 20 security officers arrested in 30 five days for fatal killings of people. The latest happened on Friday in Chicago, Illinois, where a security officer recklessly fired 20 shots down the street and killed an innocent woman coming out of the bank, all because he had Moments earlier, gotten into a confrontation, the man pulled out a gun, and the security officer was shot in the foot. Rather than he calling 911 and getting an ambulance to take care of his injury and letting police take care of the suspect, he grabbed a gun from a second security officer and began firing at the fleeing suspect even laying down on the ground on a busy street and popping off 20 rounds. An innocent woman is dead. Coming out of a bank, not knowing what was going on, Victor Brown, 34, has been arrested for first-degree murder and felony unlawful use of a weapon. It was unnecessary. It was ridiculous, partly because of poor training and partly because who he was 
According to authorities, he had a felony record. He also had numerous warrants outstanding, driving offenses, and not going to court. He had served five years in prison after pleading guilty to armed robbery in 2010. How could he possibly get a state license to be a security officer? And yet, the security company who hired him said he did have the proper training documents. We don't know if he was licensed or if it was all fraudulent. We do know he's being held on $1 million, a bail amount that will probably restrict him from getting out until court. He also remains hospitalized from his own gunshot wound. You say, well, this sounds like a justifiable self-defense. Well, no, it doesn't. Actually, the man had already fled. The security officer went back over to his second security officer to get his gun because he didn't have one. The man already fleeing. We see this frequently, and it doesn't stop. Yes, security officers are being killed. More than 15 have died this year. The latest one died just a few days ago, and we're currently looking at one that died on Saturday morning. There's a lot of things that need changing. We have contacted the Department of Justice with all of our statistics for the last 18 years. And as we stated, as I stated last week, and several of our members and management have come to the conclusion and the agreement that we need some type of standardization, some type of national standard and code and law that says, bam, this is the minimum, the bare bones minimum training, the, the bare bones requirements for security personnel, unarmed or armed, contract or proprietary. If you don't abide by this, we'll lock you up. Will arrest the security person and the company who's hiring them. I think that's the way that it should be. You can't come in and be a police officer, a firefighter, or even an EMT paramedic without the proper training credentials. And you can't have a felony. You can't. You can't be uh, a bank robber and come out. Sure, some people are uh, rehabilitated, but this is a, a type of industry a type of job where if you're a bank robber a murderer i don't see you being rehabilitated to the point of being trusted in an armed security position could be wrong <laughs> but i don't see it there are many woes and many many changes needed in the security industry please contact help desk at privateofficer.com if you have any suggestions we've had a few people over the last eh, two or three weeks they have had a few suggestions and we certainly uh, thank them and we're looking into a few things it's going to take everyone in the security industry to come to the conclusion that we need to change we're no longer a staffing company we no longer can continue doing what we're doing because it's only getting people hurt and killed, both the security officer and the innocent person. We can sit here on this program and we can discuss the same old, same old, but until we really step up to make a real change, these things will continue. Okay, so I've had my uh, say again this week on the travesties of the security industry, it makes people um, not want to hire security. It makes people not want to work in the industry. It makes people very leery when they see others uh, in the security field in uniform. Um, but we're a growing profession, and we need to be more professional. Okay. Helpdesk at privateofficer.com. Be sure to send us an email. 
Remember, you can be part of the conversation every single day, 24 hours a day at facebook.com forward slash private officer international and on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash private officer. Check out our breaking news every day at private officer breaking news blogspot.com updated every day. You can also get the latest news, breaking news, training information, officer down reports in your email box simply by going to the help desk um, correction, simply by going to privateofficer.org. A box will drop down. Just fill out your name and your email, and you will be on our database list to get all of those breaking news alerts and officer down reports and upcoming training opportunities. We don't spam you. We don't sell your news, your information, your name, your email address. We don't, we don't sell anything. We, we give things away. Speaking about uh, free, there's many free training opportunities, both on the web, free webinars, free training. Our programs often have free training attached to it, our radio shows. And now we are heading back out this year after taking a couple of years off because of COVID, and we're going to be doing a lot of training. In fact, we announced uh, about a month ago we're interested in doing mini conferences where we come to one centralized location, let's say Nashville or Atlanta or, uh, you know, wherever, and we put on a one- or two-day training um, and have a little conference for the area security companies and public safety and really get to know the folks in these areas. If you're interested in participating or helping to set those up in your area, our point of contact is always going to be helpdesk at privateofficer.com. Helpdesk at privateofficer.com. We're very excited to be able to do this and also, again, to hold the memorial services for the private security personnel and private police killed in the line of duty. For more information or to help connect with us and, and set these up, help desk at privateofficer.com. Before I go to break, uh, I want to remind you that we do have a lot of opportunities for folks to be part of the excitement here within our organization, and really do some good. Right now we have several openings on the awards uh, committee and on the benevolent committee where we help security officers who have been injured in the line of duty or support their families or also work with Crime Stoppers. It does not take a lot of your time. If you're interested, help desk at privateofficer.com. You can also help with the virtual museum. We are still working on that project, and we need people like you. Help desk at privateofficer.com. And one other opportunity that we have, and that is you can be the spokesperson, the boots on the ground in your area. Just recently, we had to present an award uh, to a uh, law enforcement officer, but we had nobody available in that community. If you want to get involved, just contact us, helpdesk at privateofficer.com. We have a lot to talk about. Still got to talk about some news, a contest coming up, and so much more here on the Private Officer Beat Radio. We'll be right back. I'm a retired VP in business, and I'm a student. I'm a mother. I'm a business analyst, and I'm a volunteer firefighter. You thought we just fought fire? Firefighters get trained to do so many things. Right here, right here, right here. Too sharp, too sharp. What we do is serious business. Three quarters of the nation's first responders are volunteers. That includes here in Connecticut. 
And lately, it's been harder than ever with fewer citizens volunteering. From teenage cadets like me to seasoned veterans like me. So what are you waiting for? You ready to make a difference? Ready to join our team? Your community needs you. We need you. Visit everydayherocc.org or stop by your local firehouse today and take the first step of joining your fire department. Welcome back to the Private Officer Beat Radio. Hey, got a lot going on here and a lot to talk about. Right now, I got the sun blinding me. We're facing uh, south here uh, in the broadcast office here. And this uh, this particular side of the building gets that early morning sun. And trust me, we've got blinds up. We've got shades up. We've got – and the sun still comes cracking through right now blinding me. But that's okay. We're going to go on with our program because we have a lot more to talk about. Remember, anytime that you need to contact us, your point of contact is helpdesk at privateofficer.com. Right now, our sister company, Armor College, is offering three very unique and special programs. The first one and, and this is very exciting because we partnered to be able to put this together. It's a forensics investigation slash crime scene technician course. And this 15-week course will really introduce you to the unique and amazing, actually, area of law enforcement that many people don't really see. It's a behind-the-scenes look at the forensics aspect of law enforcement and public safety. Go to our website at armor, A-R-M-O-U-R, college.org, or email helpdesk at armor, A-R-M-O-U-R, college.org for more information. We also have a mental health uh, for first responders. It's really called the mental health education for first responders. This is a 20-week program excellent for firefighters, medics, EMTs, law enforcement, public safety, and yes, private security. Because more and more, private security is getting involved in situations that are a direct link to mental health crisis. You need to be able to identify what's happening so that when you do have to call 911, you give them accurate information so that they can dispatch the appropriate personnel, whether that be a medic, a law enforcement, the fire department. I know in my own uh, career that our department is dispatched all of the time. Um, whenever uh, a medic, an ambulance is requested for uh, a mental health situation, the fire department responds as well. Security officers just this past weekend had to deal with a mental health crisis, a woman a challenging situation. Uh, she was loud, a little bit on the violent side. They even thought she may be trying to commit suicide. Security officers at the, the mall handled it well, although they were standoffish. Um, they called for law enforcement, but they could have could have done more had they had more education, more training. Go to our website, armorcollege.org, and check that out today. And we also have a very unique program uh, 
that's a blended training, and it's called EMR, Emergency Medical Response. This is a uh, American Red Cross course that can also be a state certification, national certification. Contact us, helpdesk at armor, A-R-M-O-U-R, college.org. Give them a call Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. until 6 p.m., area code 804-290-4388. We've always got a lot going on around here. It would behoove you. There goes another one of those words. Yep, I, I like to drop those big words sometimes. It would behoove you to get involved and to contact us to see where you fit in what you can do to make a difference. We have a big initiative coming up this summer. We're going to tell you more about that, where we're going to be working with underprivileged teenagers nationwide. So you're going to want to get involved in that, I'm sure. A lot of things happening. Um, What's happening in the news, Rick? Well, you can always check out our breaking news at privateofficernews.org or at privateofficerbreakingnews.blogspot.com. Have you checked out the latest product that we have? We have a great report, a legislative report that tells you about upcoming uh, bills that are being introduced into um, state government the House of Representatives, uh, or even the Senate, that has to do with uh, regulatory laws. We also report on regulatory issues, lawsuits involving the security industry, and so much more. You're definitely going to want to check them out. Uh, You can contact Help Desk at privateofficer.com. A shooting in California, Sacramento, has left a 21-year-old man dead. Uh, Several others shot at a bus station, a Greyhound bus station. Another 21-year-old man opened fire on passengers of the Greyhound bus Wednesday evening in Northern California, killing uh, one and injuring four. This was an active shooter situation. Uh, a 43-year-old was killed. A 25-year-old pregnant woman is in critical condition. A 38-year-old man was also shot. An 11-year-old girl also shot. Goodness. Um, I'm, the world has just gone berserk. It's getting worse and worse all the time. A security officer in Mesa, Arizona, was recognized by a local TV station after her company recommended that she be recognized with an award called Pay It Forward Award. uh, Raphael Hodge has overcome addiction issues and now is a private security officer for Allied Universal. And according to the Arizona's family and 3TV, she was nominated by a co-worker called uh, Candace and... um, According to this news article, this woman is very remarkable for everything that she's overcome. So great job. God bless. And I hope everything works out amazingly for you. This past week in Laredo, Texas, security responded to the smell of marijuana at a uh, men's room of a high school. He caught a 17-year-old with a pretty good amount of marijuana. The student asked them to please flush that down the toilet. Police working at the school soon arrived thereafter, and unfortunately, it was not flushed, but the student was arrested. Alexandria police have charged a security officer with felony malicious wounding. Police were called Saturday at about 11.30 p.m. after a man was injured and went to the Virginia Hospital Center where he notified police that he was at a local club. He was asked to leave, but before he could, he says security grabbed him, physically abused and assaulted him, and shoved him to the ground outside, causing injury. After investigating, police arrested a 35-year-old Alexandria, Virginia security guard, 
though his name was not released. He's been charged with malicious wounding uh, in this situation. At another nightclub, this one in Fridley, Minnesota, a security officer at the Two Stooges Sports Bar <laughs> was shot at during an incident. Uh, police say the gunman opened fire after there was a confrontation with several people. According to law enforcement, the security officer was not injured, but those other two people were shot and are currently recuperating. In our statistical data, we announced earlier last month that the most dangerous location for security officers, the most dangerous duty right now, and has been for the last three years, are nightclubs, strip clubs, men's clubs, bars and restaurants that serve alcohol, closely followed by retail security, including loss prevention, asset protection, and organized retail crime. And the third is residential communities, whether that be a gated community, a condominium, an apartment complex, or a long-term hotel. In New York City, the Metropolitan Transit Authority recognized four security officers for their heroic collaboration when they ran to put out a fire on a subway that was northbound on Wednesday, according to MTA Field Supervisor Sultan Mohammed, Security Officers Marcel Longhorn, Evelyn Riddick, and Richard Garcia all worked to evacuate uh, train riders and put out the fire with water and eventually by stomping it out. According to the MTA, security officers even used bottles of water that was on uh, the train that passengers had, and they quickly extinguished what could have been a major fire. The train was delayed two hours while going undergoing a inspection. The security officers were honored by the MTA, and we're going to try to do the same thing. Speaking about honoring folks, we got a call from the TSA just this past week. We had put in a request to honor a female TSA uh, security officer at Newark Airport who had performed CPR on a passenger who was down. She's only been there a short time. Uh, you know, a few months went by since we made contact. TSA finally got in touch with us, and we are going to be recognizing that young lady for her heroic actions as well. Remember, you can always contact us at helpdesk at privateofficer.com, helpdesk at privateofficer.com. Anytime that you see someone, police, law enforcement, uh, security, retail security, that needs to be recognized, helpdesk at privateofficer.com, we are here. We want to do that. In Warwick, Georgia, a cop is under arrest after he was caught selling pot while in uniform, on duty, and in a patrol car. Leon Mitchell, 32, is in custody and facing termination and multiple criminal charges. I've talked to a number of private security companies across the country. Some are POI members, some are not. About the transit security situation, trains now uh, are falling victim to burglaries almost uh, daily across the country. There's no safe place for them to park. A situation out of L.A., California, uh, multiple guns stolen from one of the rail cars, and there was supposed to be security on the tracks, but obviously they weren't. 36 guns also reported from a train uh, in Tennessee. Another set of guns, 24 guns, were stolen out of Detroit, Michigan. If you work in security, you have a security company, it might behoove you to check out maybe uh, the transit uh, rail yards in your area that could be a source of new revenue for you. In Oxnar, California, an employee of a convenience store stabbed and killed an armed robbery suspect. Authorities at the Circle K there uh, said that the man came in armed with a gun, demanded cash, and then 
try to take the employee out of the store, and that's when the employee attacked the robber, stabbing him multiple times and killing him. In Beaufort, South Carolina, that's along the beach community there, a security guard has left their gun unattended at the Beaufort County Elementary School this past week. On Tuesday, authorities say they found his gun in the bathroom unattended after he evidently used the facilities and forgot about it. Guard 1, the security provider, said that they have talked to that security officer. The school system has asked that he be removed and not allowed back in. In San Mateo, California, seems like a lot of activity coming out of California in recent months. Black Walgreens security managers have filed an age and race discrimination after they say that the stores purposely discriminated against them and terminated them without giving them severance payments. Severance payments have been offered to white security managers who were uh, terminated or laid off, but not them. They say that a new management team targets people who are 60 and over and tries to find fault to get rid of them. We're going to follow this. Our court unit follows these type of cases, and now we report them in the new legislative and lawsuit um, report that we do monthly. Macomb County, Illinois, uh, Michigan, a security officer, Gary Cybers, 76, died of COVID. A second one, 69-year-old man, is hospitalized in critical condition. Uh, according to this press release, the security officers are retired law enforcement. Two police officers being recognized for their heroic response to a car accident where a man was trapped inside of a burning, build, uh, burning vehicle in Phoenix, Arizona. Police officers Rachel Fernandez and Jessica Hunting say they rescued the man not thinking about themselves or their own injuries, which they did both sustain. They used numerous different tools. Eventually, some uh, people came along and assisted the officers. They both are being recognized by Private Officer International. We're already in contact with the uh, a public information officer, and we hope to be able to have someone, one of our representatives in Arizona, do a physical presentation. Bridgeport, Connecticut, a security officer working at a YMCA was assaulted by a person with a pepper uh, gun. According to law enforcement, the security officer at the YMCA was sprayed with a pepper spray gun this occurred late Thursday. He had to be transported to the emergency room. Police were able to locate Billy Petaway, who was disruptive um, when police arrived, and they made an arrest for second-degree assault and carrying a dangerous weapon and second-degree breach of peace. A Loomis armored car employee arrested in Winona Lake, Indiana, not for stealing once or twice or even three times, but ten times. He went back time and time again. Kenneth James Dopperstein, 30, charged with ten felony level six counts of theft. The man said he stole about $23,000 to help pay for Christmas gifts, bills, and rent. Over the last two months, POI news staff has been doing uh, an investigation of public school security. We found that New York City schools was down 2,000, 2,000. We thought at first it was 200, 2,000 school security agents. Across the country, schools are in bad shape, very violent, a huge increase in staff and student assaults, racial attacks, black against white, and an array of drug, robbery, and other violent offenses. Many schools in the last year, um, including just recently Louisville, Kentucky, have begun bringing back uh, school SROs or security. Our investigation led us to several schools where crime has been 
the highest, and we're still continuing to work on this project, and uh, we'll be giving out another report soon. A security training school and guard company in Florida was awarded $75,000 during a lawsuit, even though they were accused and it was proven that they failed to properly train dozens of charter security officers. The court awarded Friday in Vivicus $75,000 on an outstanding bill during the settlement, even though they didn't do their job properly. They had sued uh, the city for 97000 but they got uh, just a portion of that. There's uh, much more to the story. Check out this company online or on our blog. In a final news item, a Michigan police officer uh, from Brownstown Township was on routine patrol this past week. He saw a vehicle with a blown tire. Well, he thought maybe he would stop and offer his assistance, but the driver immediately became a bit suspicious, nervous. So the officer began to question the driver a little bit more. As he went into the trunk to help the driver retrieve uh, a jack and a spare tire, he noticed what he thought was some jewelry in the far part of the trunk. And sure enough, he found a stash of jewelry, $75,000 worth of jewelry, that had been stolen from several trucks outside of a mall, not too far from where the driver got a flat tire. Police soon was able to identify where the jewelry was stolen and quickly put the man under arrest. If you want to see more of our breaking news, just go to our website, privateofficerbreakingnews.blogspot.com. We're going to take a quick break, and certainly we have much more to talk about here when we come back. Thoughts of suicide may feel impossible to overcome, but with help and support, you can find hope and meaning. Call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK to speak to a counselor or visit suicidepreventionlifeline.org. It's free. It's confidential. It's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And even if it feels like it, you are not alone. now could mean rolling one over later. Driving high impairs your perception of speed, time, and distance. If you're high, don't drive. that protect and service in law enforcement put their lives on the line. These law enforcement officers often work long and irregular hours in tough and dangerous conditions, run a high risk of being attacked, wounded, or even killed by the very criminals that prey on us. Every year, hundreds of law enforcement officers are killed or seriously injured in the line of duty. Blue Alert is a system that provides the means to speed the apprehension of violent criminals who kill or seriously injure local, state, or federal law enforcement officers. Find out how you can truly help those who help. That's bluealert.us. Welcome back. Welcome back on this Monday morning to the Private Officer Beat Radio. You know what? I closed out that news segment without telling you the best story of the week. A wandering chicken was caught sneaking around a security area at the Pentagon. Pentagon law enforcement spotted this chicken wandering in a secured area. They looked. They listened. They wondered. 
what the heck? Is this a joke? Did someone slip in through a secured area and toss the chicken in here? This isn't about the chicken crossing the road, is it? Well, the loose hen found last Monday near the U.S. Department of Defense headquarters was speared his life by law enforcement. He wasn't locked up. He wasn't prosecuted. He didn't receive the death sentence. No, actually, they called him the Animal Welfare League of Arlington, Virginia. Apparently, the answer to why did the chicken cross the road is to get to the Pentagon, the group posted. Ha, ha, ha. But the chicken now will find a permanent home. Sergeant Bellanera brought the chicken to the rescue, brought the chicken in and rescued the chicken, and now has a new home. And the officer who found the chicken and the animal rescue group are seeking a name for the chicken. <laughs> well, funny and weird things do happen across the country every single day. Just a little something to lighten you up on this Monday morning, wherever you are, cold, sunny, snowy, frigid. Now you know why that chicken crossed <laughs> the road. We said last week we have a, a really exciting contest, although not many, not as many people has entered the contest. The rules are so simple. We're going to give away not one, but two patrol agencies. Private security patrol business. Check out our um, news information that we sent out, the information on our website, or contact helpdesk at privateofficer.com. Very simple rules. No investment. Everything that we're going to do, all of the challenges and different situations will happen in your hometown, your community. You don't have to travel. You don't have to take any time off from work. If you've always wanted to own your own business, you always wanted to have a security business, we're not talking about guards. We're not talking about clocking. We're not talking about clocking the house. We're not talking about all of the boarding, uh, board thumb that uh, associated with Static security. No, we're actually talking about patrol services, patrol response, alarm response, exciting, exciting stuff. Contact helpdesk at privateofficer.com if you would like more information. This is really big, big deal, folks. People don't do this every day and certainly not in uh, the security industry. In fact, I, I've never seen a company offer anything free. <laughs> I mean, this is unheard of. Again, contact us at helpdesk at privateofficer.com. We have a lot of things that we want to talk about, and uh, we have a couple of different topics that I'd like to get into. But I think we're going to save that for our next program. Um, we're collecting some data on a subject that we're looking into, and uh, I think we'll wait until we get all of our ducks in a row. We talked about chicken. Don't forget this weekend, this coming Sunday, the LP Zone, where everything is always about loss prevention, retail security, uniform and plain clothes retail security, organized retail crime. This Sunday, we've got a great show lined up. We'll be talking about not only the violence that we're seeing across the retail spectrum from the East Coast to the West, but we'll also be talking about what to do when you're outnumbered. And we talked uh, a few weeks ago about safety rooms. Well, we got a little bit more information. Some stores, some retailers are putting in safety rooms where their employees can run into and lock that door 
to stay safe. Because just this weekend, there were three more extremely violent incidents where shoplifters beat and attacked employees as they robbed stores. In one video out of White Plains, New York, a uniformed mall security officer plainly seen standing outside the store just watching. He was all alone, unarmed, really nothing more that he could do. And unfortunately, we see this time and time and time again. It makes no sense to me that a store would put a security officer all alone and unarmed in this environment, and it makes even more no sense. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I don't know what people are thinking. Why would you, as a contract security company, put a lone unarmed security officer in an area, especially in this day and time, when there are dozens of takeover shoplifting robberies every week? Why would you put someone there to be injured? or even killed. If you're going to put security there, you need to stack them up. Make sure they're armed. Make sure they have pepper spray, taser. Make sure that they outnumber the bad guys, and that way the bad guys won't come in when they see that kind of staffing. Of course, it's going to cost money. What's more important, lives or money? The LP Zone this weekend, Sunday. 4 p.m., we'll be talking about that and a whole lot more. If you are involved in retail security, Armored College has four different advanced level training programs for LP, um, also for uniform security and organized retail crime, as well as starting your own retail crime, organized retail crime investigative uh, department. Very exciting. If I were younger, I would get back into LP, organized retail crime, because it really is very exciting, much more than static uniform security. Contact them at helpdesk at armorcollege.org. See what they can do to help you out and maybe establish you in a new career. That's this weekend's program. Don't miss it. We're bringing back the COVID award, something that we had a few years ago. Uh, we awarded more than a hundred different security personnel COVID awards for working out in that infectious environment. And in fact, we awarded, uh, several companies their whole staff because they took some additional COVID, uh, safety, OSHA type safety training and we presented them with awards so we're bringing that back we'll be announcing that in an email next week and as well as placing that on uh, our website also next weekend uh, we're going to have what's called the heralds weekend we're going to recognize a number of recent private security and private police involved in heroic situations just like the four security officers who put out the fire uh, on a transit car in New York City. Um, we have a lot of people doing a lot of good, and we want to make sure that they all get their due. So we'll be bringing the Heralds Weekend, not just one time. Nope, we're going to try and do it every month. But remember, you got to participate. Send in the names and the information on folks doing good things so that we can recognize them. Helpdesk at privateofficer.com. We're very excited about a new program that we've started at POI, and that's the Cold Case Unit. If you have any experience in investigations, law enforcement, or you just have a little bit of time on your hand and you'd like to do some research for us, we have identified a number of cases, and we are currently tracking two cases, working very uh, hard and diligently on these. In fact, uh, one of these, I'm going to be going out in person to do some interviews. If you'd like to get involved, again, contact helpdesk at privateofficer.com. One of the shows that our brand new uh, platform is going to um be focusing on is missing, missing in uniform. 
and also cold cases. There are a number of security officers who have gone missing over the years. Some have been found. Others have never been heard from again. Law, law enforcement, there's been a number of officers who has also disappeared. Uh, every year, hundreds of thousands of people go missing. Most do eventually uh, come back around, but there are still many, many hundreds and thousands of cold cases of missing persons. In fact, um, during the search for the young lady who went missing with her boyfriend, they were supposed to be on a cross-country camping trip uh, a number of months ago, that's one of the issues that whole uh, incident brought up was that there are tens and hundreds and thousands of people who do go missing, and they're never found. Well, during this investigation, uh, I believe it was four different missing people that they found that was not related to this situation, but it brought others out searching uh, for those that were still missing, and they did find, uh, unfortunately, deceased, but they did find those other four people. We have a lot of different things happening. We keep telling you this here at Private Officer International, Armor College, Blue Ram Media Group, and other companies that we have in our uh, families of companies. If you'd like to get involved, please contact Help Desk at PrivateOfficer.com. We're giving away a patrol business. You can have your own business. We will mentor you, train you, and even give you some startup money. Contact Help Desk at privateofficer.com. That's going to do it for this edition of the Private Officer Beat Radio. Remember, we're just a phone call away, an email away. Contact us for anything that we could do to help you. Uh, sorry, we, we ran out of money last week. <laughs> You're going to have to wait for that handout, for that loan. Uh, but if you can spot us a couple hundred, well, we'll take that. Until the next time, folks, be blessed, be safe, and we will see you back here on the radio.